Greetings all, it's JD here from Studio 2105. Welcome back to Mixstream Online and a brand new episode of Weekly Update Wednesdays. As usual, a warm welcome to all the new viewers and a big shout out and thank you to all the patrons who help to support the channel financially. If you are new to this channel, please do head on down and click on the subscribe button and don't forget to click on the notification bell as well so that you'll be updated every time I put out a new video. Do sign up for the email list for a bunch of free stuff and if you want to become a patron, head on down to www.patreon.com slash studio2105. Lots of special perks and benefits await patron members, okay? So do check it out. This week's featured question touches on the subject of loudness normalization on the streaming platforms. Now, this is a topic which um, has been asked many times but I didn't really want to go into it because right, all the technical data is easily researchable online. So, you know, why do I want to cover this? But this time around, I came across this question and I really felt that I needed to address this once and for all. Okay, so here we go. Why are commercial masters so loud? Considering streaming platforms normalize loudness to minus 14 LUFS, is there a good technical reason for doing this? I feel like people are spreading misinformation to reduce competition and protect their proprietary secrets. Yes, folks, it has come to this, right? That even the subject of mastering and loudness normalization has entered the realm of fake news and conspiracy theories, okay? Now, though I'm going to present this to you, right, my take on this based on um, it's a combination of right technical documents that are available out there and also my personal experience, right, working with different people, right, working with the artists, working with producers, working with uh, label executives, right, and also mastering engineers as well. So, you know, I'm going to take all of their opinions, I'm going to take all of the experience and, and knowledge from all the discussions and conversations I've had with different people across the whole industry. So now, now I'm all for free speech, I'm all for people's rights to believe in whatever they want to believe in, okay? Right. Anyway, let's get down to the real question at hand. When loudness normalization was introduced a few years ago, you know, many uh, engineers like myself rejoiced, right, in the thought that, you know, it signaled, right, it, it meant, oh, finally, it was the end of the loudness wars. <sighs> okay, right. Now, um, although it has won a battle, okay, against um, hyper-compressed and ultra-loud masters, you know, the loudness war itself, is still ongoing, okay, and uh, in in one way it has manifests itself right in what you just described. A lot of the information that I'm sharing in this video is derived from the uh, AES technical document TD one double o eight one zero zero eight. Uh, recommendations for loudness of uh, internet audio streaming. Let me read this and on demand distribution. Okay, right. That is the title of the technical document. Uh, this was just recently published a few weeks ago. So it is a brand new document, okay? And it would supersede all other technical documents that come before it. Now, I recommend downloading a copy of this, right? Of the technical document from the uh, AES website and use it as a reference, okay? Because AES standards are what we professionals strive for in order to, one, to deliver better quality and also, right, not forgetting, a better end user experience. So what is loudness normalization? Loudness normalization adjusts the loudness of content to match a desired distribution loudness, right? The target by applying uniform attenuation or gain. This reduces the annoying loudness jumps, okay? One track's too soft, one track suddenly becomes too loud. And it also reduces the incentive, right, to produce 
loud content. Now, when applying normalization, right, the loudness of the original audio might be above or below the desired distribution loudness. Now, if it is above, right, normalization will attenuate the audio to the desired value. And uh, this process, right, is called downward normalization. Now, if it is below, the reverse applies. We uh, apply positive gain, and this is called upward normalization and sometimes may require peak limiting. Now, the technical document goes into the subject in much greater detail, right? So much more that I can cover in this brief video, but it basically outlines, right, the recommendations for these streaming platforms to go by. But herein lies a problem, okay? Now, although the target loudness level is minus 14 LUFS, there are several other factors at play. First of all, now, even though the integrated loudness by which we measure, okay, um, all the streaming content is defined, all right, by the uh, ITUR BS1770 standard, that standard is currently the best metric, right, for measuring loudness for human listeners. Now, even though we have that, there is going to be some material out there which are going to be very dynamic in nature. Now, this means that they can sometimes sound too soft when compared to other material, even though it may measure the same, okay? Now, once again, TD1008 does offer recommendations, right, on how to address this, okay? This uh, kind of scenario. So, check out the technical document. However, much of modern pop music has um, very limited dynamic range, okay? It's just the nature of the beast, okay? So producers and mixers nowadays have to resort to other strategies to create the dynamic interest, okay? So this mainly centers around, you know, the arrangement, the music arrangement itself, what instruments you use, the frequency spectrum, density, the rhythmic meter, and, you know, a lot of other, right, tips and tricks and approaches that you can uh, use to achieve that forward motion and excitement in the track, okay? Now, if you watch some of my live streams, right, the mixed stream live streams, you see that I always address and I talk about this um, same topic as well. Now, the main mystery for us, right, um, are the mechanisms in which these streaming platforms apply this loudness normalization. Now, we really have no idea of, you know, how the algorithms work. We have no way of knowing what goes under the hood, right, of their platforms. So here's your answer to the question. That is why commercial masters still prefer to err on the side of caution, okay, and aim for louder than minus 14 LUFS. We let the streaming platforms do the job, right, let the loudness normalization do its work, and to turn it down, right, to the target distribution level. As I mentioned earlier, with loudness normalization, right, there's no longer any benefit to having hyper limited and hyper compressed ultra super loud masters. And you know, that is a topic which I've covered in a previous video on my channel, right? You can check that video out. Now, despite the evolving technologies, right, the goal of mastering has always remained the same. And that is to optimize and to deliver the best possible sounding product for the various distribution mediums that it is intended for. Be it CD, be it physical, you know, physical mediums, uh, vinyl cassette, um, and of course nowadays, the streaming platforms. Striking a balance between dynamics and competitive loudness, right, is the key, right? And a skill mastering engineer knows just how to achieve that. Making a record sound competitive, right, without compromising on the artist's and the producer's creative intent. Ian Shepard, right, he's the mastering engineer and also the founder of the Dynamic Range Day movement. He sums it up as, okay, and I don't remember the exact words, but, you know, I paraphrase, okay? We master it not to sound loud, but we master it to sound good. For me, the way how I interpret, right, what uh, is said there is that, you know, we should really not adhere too much to certain dogma, whether, you know, things should be always be done in this way, 
right on on one hand oh we're gonna make masters loud so that it's gonna be competitive right and uh, you know and it's gonna attract the attention then on the other hand you have the other um uh, other end of the spectrum is like oh we should preserve all the dynamics okay let's we cannot master loud because it will it will sound better so I think there can be a middle ground. Right? As I mentioned, we need to strike a balance. I would say we should always let the music itself speak and determine how loud it should be. Again, the saying goes, right? Master it to sound good, right? Not master it to sound loud. So sometimes some styles of music will work. And ad admittedly, okay, I have made that comparisons before. Sometimes some music will sound better um, when you know it has aggressive compression and aggressive limiting is applied to it. Not all, some styles, okay? So once again, music, you have to look at you know, your mixes and your masters on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, listen to it and really determine what sort of processing, what amount of compression or limiting is appropriate to it. Make make an informed decision. Make a uh, educated com comparison. Again, I hate to use the expression, but yeah, really use your ears. Listen. Sometimes, right, a master which is mastered a little bit louder, it does sound a little bit more exciting, right? Even though when I brought it down, and very importantly, listen back at equal volume levels. Okay, sometimes the one that has been mastered louder just has that a little bit of extra density to it compared to one which has more dynamics. And then on certain situations, the opposite may be true. So again, right, don't right, adhere to a, you know, a strict dogma or strict practice as to how it should be. Best mastering engineers out there know what to do and I trust them with that. Now, one of the best tools to test, right, um, if your masters sound good or not after it's gone through right the uh, various um, streaming platforms is the loudness penalty meter website okay now very simple to use super simple to use right you just upload your audio file and it will measure and then it will provide you a playback according to how it will sound to the various platforms okay such as spotify tidal apple music youtube yeah, i'm going to leave the uh, link it's going to be down here below and also in the description so you can check it out okay i believe it's also in the form of a plugin as well so right i'm sure more info will be in the website so there you have it there is no conspiracy behind it right trying to you know um, beat the competition or something like that all this information is out there it is right outlined in technical documents and there are very, very good reasons why, okay? You still find that commercial masters still kind of aim for, right, uh, louder than what is the target um, loudness levels. So I, I personally, I would, if I were to master stuff, I would aim for between minus 12 to sometimes minus 10. I find that this is kind of the sweet spot, the sweet range for most material. I find if you go a little bit louder than, than that, okay, things start to sound a bit too squashed. You know, it's a bit too much of a compromise for me already. But again, right, to you, uh, to each their own, right, whichever you prefer, it's entirely up to you. Knowledge normalization will take care of it. So in the end, you know, right, the user experience will still be an enjoyable one. So what do you think, right? What are your opinions and your thoughts on this subject? I would love to hear them from you, okay? Um, please do leave your questions and your feedback down in the comments section below, right? And you can always contact me on social media as well. So that's all for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you found it useful and informative, please do leave a like, do share, and remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Do consider also to become a patron. Sign up at www, <coughs> excuse me, www.patreon.com slash studio 2105. Right, I'm recording this in the morning. That's why, you know, my voice isn't really warmed up yet. Okay, right. Right, hand on down, become a patron. I really appreciate all the support that you can give. Okay, so till next time, see you in another video real soon. Stay safe, stay happy and healthy. Happy recording and mixing. Peace, love, and music.